I'm giving myself a budget of $250 to spend on a cheap solar generator setup, and we're gonna find out what it can run and what it can't. I know exactly what I'm gonna get. EcoFlow River 2, that's where we're starting. For me, it was between this one and the Blue Eddy AC2A. Both seem great. I don't think you could go wrong with either, frankly, but the EcoFlow River 2 has a slightly higher battery capacity. 239, but there's a $70 off coupon and it comes with the solar charging cable that we need. So I'm adding that to cart. Now we just need the solar panel and I think we could get away with a 100 watt solar panel. This wouldn't be a portable panel because portable panels are just way more expensive. The EcoFlow River 2 has a 110 watt max solar input. And this is what I wanted to see. There's a $58 100 watt panel that might be within our budget. Let's quickly make sure this solar panel is indeed compatible with the EcoFlow River 2. So that uh, power station's solar input is eight amps max, 11 to 30 volts, 110 watts. 24.5 volts VOC, that's within the limit, and 5.2 amps uh, ISC, that is also within the limit. So this very cheap 100 watt panel is compatible. Add to cart, the subtotal is 297. But remember, we have that coupon. Proceed to checkout. 256, you've gotta be kidding. Oh wait, free shipping, free shipping. That's gotta get us below. 248. Yeah. I feel like I just won something. Place order. Order placed. I know some people will say it's just because I got a good coupon, but if you have been seeing the sales and the deals on these power stations for basically all of 2024, then you know that is not abnormal. And it's not hard to find that good of a deal on these things right now. Hell yeah. Everything <laughs> arrived. <laughs> So let's unbox it. I'm gonna start with the solar panel to get it out of the way. Okay, so it is a 100 watt, I believe it is, yes, monocrystalline solar panel from EcoWorthy. Next, I will do the adapter cable to connect the solar panel to the power station. This is EcoFlow branded. Simple, but long, which I like. The ones I own of these are more like two feet, so I'm excited that this is a lot longer. And lastly, the EcoFlow River 2 portable power station. Got the manual here. It looks like a 12 volt like car charging cord, and then uh, a little wall AC charging cord. And of course, the EcoFlow River 2 power station. Quite small as we expected, but looks like it has all the stuff we need. Before we see what this setup can run, we have to charge it. So let's solar charge it. So it arrived 28% charged. And then to solar charge it, I just plug the adapter cable into the cables on the solar panel. So I just match male to female MC4 connectors. Make sure this one connected. And then I grab the XT60 port and I plug it in to the back of the power station. And then after a second, the solar panel should start charging. We should see an input pop up here at some point. Still not seeing anything, okay. All right, let's check. And we're just gonna check if this end of the adapter cable has voltage. Okay, it does have voltage, 22 volts. Okay, the panel is in a bit of shade, so let me move it out here and just see if that changes anything. Oh my God, thank you. I guess it was just shaded, but it, didn't, it wasn't even that shaded. Okay. But there we go, 62 watts charging from a 100 watt solar panel. It's actually not too bad. I'm gonna use this chair to prop it up at a slightly better angle to try to get the most power out of it as possible. Look at that, 78 watts. 
I'm just gonna leave this out for an hour and we are gonna come back and see how much it charges in that hour. Another good thing about going with a brand name like EcoFlow or Bluetti or Anchor is that they're gonna have a good app. So while I'm just inside cooking, I can look at the app and see, okay, the solar panel is charging the power station at a rate of 74 watts and the power station is around 42% charged. It's been exactly one hour and the battery is at 55%. So this setup can solar charge the power station in three and a half to four hours of good sun. And solar charging is just one of four ways that you can charge this thing. You can charge it from your car's 12 volt socket using the included 12 volt charging cable. There we go. It's charging at a rate of, it's creeping up. It's maxing out at a charging rate of around 100 watts. Of course, you can also use the included wall charging cable to charge it from an AC outlet. Let's see how fast that is. It's making a little bit of noise. And the charging rate settled at 365 watts. In the app, if you want, you can adjust the AC charging speed from 100 to 360 watts. So I'm actually getting a little bit higher than the max at 365. And you can adjust the car input charging speed if you want when you're charging it from your 12 volt car socket. And lastly, this USB-C port is bi-directional, so you can charge via USB-C. There it goes, charging at a rate of 17 watts. I plug the AC charging cable back in, and if you're wondering what this is, this is estimated time remaining, uh, so it says recharge time, there's 12 minutes until it's full. The last five to 10% has been taking a while, it said, five minutes remaining for about 20 minutes now. And I did turn it down to 100 watts charging speed uh, just to just to you know keep the battery a little cooler. But still, it's been stuck at like 95, 96% for a while. So I don't know what's going on with this thing. Okay, it took a little longer than expected, but we got there. Now that it's fully charged, let's see what it can run. So it can obviously charge your portable electronics like your phone, your laptop, portable power bank, a pair of Bluetooth headphones, and it can power them all at the same time. But I also wanna push this thing to find out what its limit is. For starters, you have the two AC outlets here, which you can turn on and off just by pushing this button. That turns on the power station's inverter, so there is a bit of a high-pitched whirring noise that I can hear, but what it allows me to do is just plug in almost any device that you can plug in to a regular wall outlet. And yes, you can plug in two AC devices at a time. But to be honest, these two outlets are pretty close together. So at times you might have to get a little creative about how you connect your devices. Normally I'd be able to see the power output of these two lamps on the screen here, right there, but it's showing zero watts. And this is a quirk I've seen of more expensive power stations as well. I just think they have trouble tracking the power output of low wattage AC devices. You can also run 12 volt DC devices up to 100 watts off of the power station's 12 volt socket. So you remove this little cap, turn it on like we did with the AC outlet, and then take your device's 12 volt plug and just plug it like that right in and the device turns on. This 12 volt chest fridge is a higher wattage device than those two lamps, so we can see in real time how many watts it's using and we get an estimate of how long the power station will last. This information is also all available in the app so I can see output, state of charge, and the cool thing is I can turn the AC and DC outlets on and off remotely. So let's turn this off. There we go, it turned off. In addition to the estimate of time remaining on the screen, you can calculate how long your device will run off the power station. First, you need to know how many watts your device uses. So look on the label or on the product page, the label will be on the back or on the bottom most often. And look for wattage, and sometimes it won't list wattage, it'll list current and voltage. This one I know from the label on the bottom uses 0.55 amps at 120 volts AC, so it uses 66 watts. And then you take your power station's stated capacity, in this case it's 256 watt hours, and according to EcoFlow, you haircut that by about 15%. So we're gonna multiply it by uh, 0.85, so 85%, and we get 217, 218 watt hours. We divide that by the uh, wattage of our device, and we get 
roughly three to three and a half, three and a quarter hours of runtime, uh, which kind of lines up, even though this is only 90% charged at the moment, it lines up with what we see on the screen. Devices don't always use their you know, stated wattage. Oftentimes it's a little less, but it gives you a good estimate. Being able to find or calculate a device's wattage is also key to knowing if you can run your device off of the power station. The River 2 has a stated power output of 300 watts. I looked at my TV's power rating on the label and I saw that it uses 165 watts max. So I know I can safely run my TV off of this power station, which is also how I knew I could safely run the 12 volt fridge off of the DC outlet because the 45 watts of power that it uses is less than the 100 watt DC limit. EcoFlow is a little vague if this particular power station could be used as a UPS. So let's test it. So first I'm gonna plug the power station's charger into the AC outlet back here. We're gonna see what the heck happens. Okay, just plugged it in. So it's now charging the power station at the same time that the power station is powering the TV. Now the TV, it's running off of grid power and not the power station. So we're gonna see what happens when I unplug it. Okay, it worked. Okay, I'm honestly impressed. Never mind, unplug the wrong thing. Okay, let's try this again. I unplugged the right thing that time. You can hear the power station turning on. It worked! The TV didn't cut off. Round two, this time with the TV and a lamp. Okay, a little flicker with the lamp. It's pretty fast. The UPS's switchover time is, I think, 30 milliseconds. I don't think that's fast enough for some sensitive electronics, but I mean, we saw it work for the lamp, sort of, and it worked for the TV. So what is the limit then? Surely something this small can't run a kitchen fridge, right? Well, if we look inside and we come over here, look at the label and do the math, it turns out, yes, for fridges like mine that use less than 300 watts, this thing can run them. At least in theory, let's make sure. I unplugged the fridge, it's not on, and I connected it to this extension cord here. So let's plug it in. I had to wait about 10 minutes for the fridge to start running again, which is normal. Uh, this happened the last two times I ran this thing off of a power station. But now if you look, it's using around 50 watts and it is indeed running off of the EcoFlow River 2. Since the device's wattage rating is the max amount of power it can use, you might be thinking, what if I run a high wattage device on a low setting? This blender, for instance, has a wattage rating of 1440 watts but it also has 10 speeds. So maybe it'll run? We got an error code and then I tried it again off camera and I got another error code. So we're not doing this again. Did the blender overload the power station which is what caused the error message? Well, when I plug the blender in to the wall via a kilowatt, thankfully the error message is gone now, so I can still use my blender. I was a little worried about that. When I turn it to the first speed setting, which is what I was doing on the power station, and we check the kilowatt, we see it's only using around 80 watts. I didn't get an overload notification on the screen, which can happen here. So I'm at the point where I'm kind of concluding, and maybe I'm wrong, let me know, you know, that sensitive, high-powered electronics just shouldn't be run off of this power station. That brings me to this thing's surge rating, which is 600 watts, but it doesn't say how long that's for. You have to turn this feature on in the app. It's called X Boost there for whatever reason. It just says it's ideal for shorter durations like hair dryers and drills, and you can connect only one appliance to avoid interference caused by voltage fluctuations. So I've got a hair dryer, and we are gonna test it to see what happens. <laughs> When we go over 300 watts, this is my fiance's, so hopefully it doesn't get damaged. And this thing doesn't have like a circuit breaker as far as I can tell. So if we go over 600 watts, oh my God. Oh my God, it turned on. Oh crap. <laughs> okay, 300 watts, 300 watts. Wait, okay, it's holding steady. And we are on, oh my gosh, what's happening? Okay, we are on the, I think medium heat, low speed. What happens? What happens if we turn it up to high? 
Does it overload? Am I gonna blow this power station? 361 output. Oh, okay. That's not nearly as high as I thought it was gonna be using. But I'm waiting to see if there is like an overload sign that pops up. I know there's a notification that I saw in the app or in the manual. It should pop up here, but I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing anything. And this is obviously, oh, it cut out. Overload, oh, do you see that? Wait, wait, let me zoom in more. Okay, over, okay, well, it just flashed overload. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it, but it was flashing overload underneath the 74. And that must be why, why this cut out. Let's see if this is still working. Oh, thank gosh. Can you do cheaper than $250? Like, why did I choose $250 to be my budget? Well, I actually tried this challenge with a $100 budget earlier in the year, and frankly, I was unable to do it. I got this setup here for around $115 total, but I never made a video about it because the power station was dead on arrival. It wouldn't turn on or charge or power anything. And I could have replaced it, but a lot of the super cheap power stations in that price range just seemed like total crap. And that's not even mentioning, you know, uh, how tiny the solar panel is. And I started filming this video with a $200 budget in mind, but after a day of online shopping, I kept running into a similar problem. For that price range, I was probably gonna be stuck again with a no-name brand of power station or incredibly tiny solar panel. So it was at that point that I figured I let you guys decide the budget and y'all pretty overwhelmingly wanted to see the $250 budget. And after going through this experience, I think that 250 is the price, at least today at this moment in time, at which you start to get a lot more bang for your buck. That being said, let me know if you think this setup is worth it or not. And if I do another video like this one, let me know what my budget should be for that one.